and we could do EU. And uh, we thought EU is the best uh, alternative because we simply wanted our people to have the same uh, human rights and economical development like you have in any uh, European country. We said our people should have that. And of course it is a vicious circle, economy and human rights. I mean, one goes together with the other one. We do believe. We still believe. Uh, if you just do uh, economy well, one day it will crack up if you don't human rights because when democracy will come, maybe you remember there was a crisis in the 90s in the Far East. And, and, uh, and also that will be the crisis in a lot of other not open economies in the future. So it, uh, we believe it comes with itself. When you open up, uh, the, when you want to open up the economy, you have to start with human rights. So we did the, um, we made ourselves ready to go for the um, uh, Copenhagen criteria in the human rights. And I, uh, we had tons of conversations, a lot of discussions before, years and years before in the 90s. And believe me, the prime minister knows what he's doing. I mean, it wasn't just a lip thing, you know, uh, EU or whatever. Uh, but uh, as everybody says, it's not the where you go. It is the way where you want to go. And here, the same thing goes for Turkey. Within 2002 to 2011, nine years, where did we start? Where are we now? I think... We did our job here in this country because we opened up our economy, we opened up our system to the EU. We could, uh, my very dear friend Egeman, who is in charge of, of, uh, of EU today, uh, if, if uh, the political okay would come from the EU, the chapters would be done within one and a half years now, all of them, because all uh, governmental uh, ministries and every everybody got his task to align uh, with the EU standards and whatever. And so we are working for ourselves and for our people. While in the EU, from the other side, I have to admit, I myself, I'm one of the top sponsors of the EU. But I'm so devastated by, by the double standards. I saw myself and I heard with my uh, ears and with my eyes when we talked, for an example, in the first meeting in, it was Copenhagen, I think, in 2002, right after the elections, in, in, in December 2002, I believe. Those meeting, uh, Tayyip Erdogan said, what, what, would you, what would you do, I mean, when, when you put, when you allow uh, Cyprus into, because it's a divided island, we're talking about only uh, southern Cyprus. What would happen with Turkey? Because they would block everything. And I tell you, I heard from all the leaders the same thing. Don't worry. Don't worry. We make them not to do, not to say anything. They're just southern Cyprus. And what happened, I was there too, in 2004, was it? When it was really time, yeah, it was 2004. Again, uh, this time in Brussels, I believe. December, December 2004 in Brussels. <laughs> the same people, the same people. It, they didn't change. Uh, all of a sudden said, I remember that morning when the Dutch, uh, I think foreign minister, Boat, or Both, yeah, Boat was the name, came into the room. We're sitting there including uh, Tayyip Bey is the Prime Minister, Abdullah Bey is Foreign Minister, and me and a few others are sitting. And um, he says, well, I'm happy that we are done with everything and you can start negotiations and everything is clear what you wanted. But there is a small, just one issue. Uh, you have to agree on uh, southern Cyprus that you accept, blah, blah, and all this stuff, all of a sudden.
When I heard this, and I know the Prime Minister for a very long time, I remember writing these text messages to, my, to the friends of mine. And I wrote the same message. I said, it's over. We're going back. We're going home. I knew my Prime Minister. And you know what? 15 minutes later, he stood up and said, thank you, bye-bye. We went. We went out of the meeting. I knew it, we would go. Uh, he just, these 15 minutes, he didn't speak at all. He just thought his new strategy. What would he do after he goes out? Where would we heading Turkey? These 15 minutes, he thought over it. When he was clear, stood up, thank you, we're going. And everybody but a few of us was shocked. And you know the story. Then they came. Uh, Gerd Schroeder came, Tony Blair came. But you, it's a pity, Europe had good leaders back then. Tony was, Blair was a good leader. Gerd Schroeder was a leader. You know, and uh, so we started the whole thing again. But I remember again, such an issue when they, uh, the European Union leaders told us, if you and Northern Cyprus would make the Annan plan happen and say yes to the referendum, don't worry, we will lift up all the embargoes and um, give the help and this and that. And we did it. And they even agreed at the EU that they would do that, what they uh, promised. Still today, it's been, what, five, six years, they didn't act. And they are th saying the Ankara agreement and this and that. Hey, an agreement is an agreement, OK. But if both parties have to do what they, uh, what they said that they would do, if you, only one side is doing that, uh, it's not an agreement anymore. So. Uh, I am a little, not a little, a lot, uh, really disappointed that the EU has not a voice. And I don't think I need to tell you what I mean with that. Because Germany is the main issue here, with three and whatever, 3.3 .3 million Turks or Turkish Germans, I think 800, 900,000 Turkish Germans are there already, and two and a half million still uh, Turkish Turkish Turks. Uh, Germany is the main issue in, 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 uh, in the EU for Turkey. I believe uh, that Turkey, if we can go the path we are going the last eight years now, still another few years, uh, a lot of people, including the CDU, especially of course CSU, uh, will understand, hey, not a few million, millions of, uh, what was the word, um, Bauernhorden, uh, herds, uh, herds of, 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 uh, of villagers would overrun uh, Germany if Turkey would join the EU. The opposite happens. Rain's coming back. A lot of people are trying to come back to Turkey because here's the, jo here's the job, here's the growth, not in Germany. And, uh, and no Turk does want to go out of his country anymore because of, of political reasons. And before it was economical reasons, and now the economical reasons are also gone. Everybody knows there's no money in the EU uh, cash anymore, which you could get. The opposite, Turkey would be the second, if we would join, we would be the second largest European economy, not getting, but paying. We know that. And uh, there will be a day when they will know that too, but this day when the Europeans will understand that in a few years' time, hopefully, uh, that the Turks, the Turkish youth will pay their the rents, their, their um, rente, uh, their, yeah, the retirement costs, then there, would, there can be a problem because it's not important, as I say, that Austria or France will have a referendum whether Turkey can get it or not. That's not very important. Important is whether the Turkish referendum, if we have that, and I'm pretty sure we would have that, 
would say yes to EU after what they did to us the last so many years. But I uh, happen to know Tayyip Erdogan, the today's prime minister, since the late 80s. And I liked him, we liked each other very much. And I uh, believed that after Azal, uh, he could be the new leader. And I told him back in the 90s, he will be prime minister. Uh, I didn't uh, intend it to be in politics because I'm a businessman. I mean, it's deadly for a businessman to be in politics. But it came that I had to be founder of the party because there was no other businessman. And uh, plus, in those days, there was very few guys who are, who knows uh, the Western mentality not only the language. The language is a lot of people do know, but mentality is important, you know. And when I went with the prime minister to, uh, to, to meetings, he knew, uh, he often didn't use translators because I was never a translator. I just said, he wants to say that, which was very quick and simple. And if you believe, if you trust somebody, I think it is very, very easy for you instead of a uh, translator saying every word, and in the end you really don't understand what he says because you don't know the mentality in what he says, because it's word for word. And it went so long that uh, even uh, the German prime ministers didn't use any other translators. It was very un, uh, uh, unorthodox that two prime ministers are talking with only one guy who translates, and that was me. Uh, I did that with Schröder, it started with Schröder, and even with Merkel it went on like this. And you can believe me that the uh, protocol guys from the other side were very unhappy about that. But uh, that was good because the others trusted me too. So um, I helped the Prime Minister uh, to open up the party, the uh, AK party. I uh, refused to go into Parliament, be Minister or whatever. Uh, because I love my freedom and uh, the hierarchy, the political hierarchy is nothing for me. Plus the system I don't like, the political system, still today what we have in Turkey is uh, not my view. I mean, uh, we actually in Turkey we have the presidential system. Tayyip Erdogan in my eyes is a president because people choose him. People do not choose AK parties, whatever, X, Y, Z. People choose him. So that's why he, he knows that, of course, because his vote is always, when you do a comparison, it's always higher than the vote of the party. So, uh, but he doesn't have any responsibilities because we don't have the presidential system. So he has the authority, but not the responsibilities. That's why I believe we should bring in the presidential system, so to give the president also the responsibilities. So I'm, taking it from the other side. And um, I, uh, after three and a half years ago, after we got 47% in the second general election, I asked him for leave, and, but it took, of course, seven, eight months until he said yes. And I went back to uh, business, but word go around that people think I'm a good advisor. People said, ah, this is the advisor to the prime minister. Well, I wasn't an advisor, I just tried to help him. I, I called myself assistant. And, uh, but anyway, people thought, and uh, businesses came to me, of course, in the beginning, very clear, because I could be a good lobbyist. But after a few uh, years, they understood, hey, this guy is also in business, which I was since, my, since I was 11. I was in my father's and grandfather's businesses. So now I'm working with a lot of companies, including uh, German companies and, and, and U.S. companies, private equities and energy companies and others. I'm working uh, for them. And I try to, uh, to bring in uh, their capital to invest here in this country because there are huge opportunities.